Hey guys, how's it going? This is Ryan from uh, Nank and Hobby again here in Southgate. And we're doing another really cool project for you today. Uh, we're taking the Traxxas X-Max and we're actually gonna be doing the 800 kV conversion to it. So that's gonna be including the, you know, uh, Castle's gonna be 800 kV motor, the XLX2. Uh, we're gonna be running on 8S, of course. Um, and then we're also gonna be running all the BNM parts to transfer this all over. So here in a few, we're gonna be doing a whole, almost like a quick tutorial on how to install some of these parts and stuff like that. But uh, to do this kind of conversion, it's it can be a little intense. There's a lot of stuff you do have to have. You know, I have to have a um, 800 kV motor in ESC. You can also do 1100 as well that they offer. Um, you need a motor mount, a gear set, or a belt drive. We're gonna be doing the belt drive today for this one. You also need the ESC plate. Um, just to hold on to that receiver because the receiver that or not the receiver, sorry, the ESC. We need a new ESC plate, and with that particular plate, um, we'll actually put it right on top of the old receiver box. Yeah, because unfortunately the new ESC that we're going to be using is quite a bit bigger than the stock one, so it ain't going to fit in that small little space. Um, then, other than that, we're going to be needing a new receiver box because the ESC plate sits right on top of that receiver box. So it's going to be deleting that. Um, and other than that, um, the only recommended thing that Brett would, you know, pick up when you're doing this is the Velcro battery strap kit that they sell. It makes it pretty much uh, almost very universal to all the different four cell batteries you can get, even if you run higher cells in the future, stuff like that as well. Um, so yeah, here's gonna be a whole little tutorial on exactly how to get into this and what you need to do. And uh, yeah, well, let's get into it. Alright guys, I went ahead and took off all the wheels and tires just to make it a little bit easier to move this big guy around. But one of the things we're going to start doing here with this major install is we're going to start taking out the motor, the ESC, uh, pull apart the receiver box and electronics in here, uh, get rid of the battery trays, like the battery tray retention brackets, and even pull out the center brace, but we will be putting that back in later. But I'm going to go ahead and get started in taking this apart and uh, yeah, I'll see you in just a few. Okay, now that we got this thing all stripped down, one of the big things that you're gonna wanna do to take off the stock motor is keeping the temperature sensor. That's gonna be crucial in making this work with the castle system when we set up the stock radio with it again. So make sure you uh, take that off and keep it in good good condition. And uh, we'll, look, we'll uh, come back to that in a little bit here once we install the motor and everything. Okay, next on this install, what we're gonna wanna do is take out the old spur gear lay shaft and even the cover and everything like that as well on here. So one screw holding this little guard down. Then that will come out. And actually, that will not be something we'll be using again. And then there's gonna be four screws on this cap right here. And that will take out your whole spur gear, cush drive, and lay shafts in there. And just remember with this, there are two different size screws that come out of these get out of these uh, these housings here. So just make sure you don't get those mixed up.
just like that there. And then we'll get back to this guy later. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna be assembling here is gonna be the spur gear or the spur drive pulley. What you're gonna do is use the included uh, lay shaft. It's gonna have two nice smooth cuts on here for you. That's what your grub screw's gonna grab onto. So what you wanna do here first is take this, take one of the existing bearings that came off the original lay shaft of the car. You're gonna slip that right over this way. Just like that. And then you'll notice that there's gonna be two uh, threaded holes on your pulley. Those are going to want to line up with those two flat spots. Alrighty. Now included with your kit of the pulley, you're going to get four little grub screws. So what you're going to want to do is make sure you get a little bit of Loctite on these guys. And thread them right down into the hole. And what you're going to want, and I'll show you once I get the grub screw all the way down. Okay, you're going to want just about a four, three, four millimeter gap between the top here and your pulley. That's all you're going to want. You don't want to have it any, any farther than that. So crank down on that pretty good. And then repeat the process for the other one. With this build, Loctite is definitely going to be very important. Alrighty, and you'll notice you'll have two leftover grub screws. Those are going to actually sit right on top of the other ones that you just drove down. It's almost kind of like a lock, you know, like a lock nut in a way. It just helps prevent those grub screws from ever backing out again. Because if these do back out, and they've actually reached the point to where it's touching the belt, they will just completely shred that belt apart. Alrighty. So that's all nice and tight there. And the next thing you're going to want to do is take your drive gear and pin. This is all stock parts off the truck that came right off your original lay shaft. So you're going to put that pin in. Drive gear slips right over it with the bearing on the back. Just like that there. And then what you're going to want to do is take your stock cover, or if you have an aftermarket one, this is the time you'll want to put that on. Take your stock cover and the four screws. You'll notice there's two different sizes. So if you pay attention to my orientation that I have, the two longer ones will go into the back. And the two short ones will go right into the front there like that. And then what we'll do, I'm going to set you up to on top here. And what we're gonna do is set this right down inside. So, as long as you don't lose the bearing in the process. All right, that sets down in there just like that. And then what you're gonna wanna do, is grab your belt, slip that right in there like that. That all sits down there nicely. And then put your cap right back on. Alrighty, now you got your main spur gear or drive pull or spur pulley on there and it's all mounted in there. So the next step is what we're going to be doing is installing our uh, B&M motor mount. So this motor mount will include the motor mount of course. You're going to get two bolts with the larger thick washers in there as long as you don't drop them. And what you're going to also include here as well is you're going to have four screws with four washers in there as well. And I'll show you where these all go in here in just a second. So if you take your truck, 
This mount will sit right in the stock spot. You're gonna make sure you wanna remove all four of those pins. This will sit right in the stock spot there, just like that. And on the bottom, what you're gonna do is take these screws here, including a washer, just like this, and bolt it right in. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is use a little bit of Loctite on that. All right, make sure all four are gonna be nice and tight. Definitely don't want this to come loose at all. Now, you got your motor mount nicely installed there. So the next step is getting our motor installed. Now, a lot of people will go with uh, either the Castle 800 KV or the 1100 or there's always the Hobbywing uh, 800 and 1100 KV motor as well. Those are the more the four most popular ones we do sell it here at the shop. So to install this, what you're gonna wanna do is grab your bolts with that thicker washer on there. There's gonna be two of them. And depending on what motor and kind of ESC setup you have, with the Castle one, it's definitely a little bit harder to run the fan on this one just because of the way the, wire, the wires are running. You can solder them back the other way so the wires are pointing this way here. The only downfall is it does void your warranty with it a little bit. So we're just gonna run it without a fan for now. Okay. Now the next step on this is going to be to install our pinion. This is going to be the same way as we did the spur pulley. Is you're going to be utilizing four grub screws. There should be two per each hole. Now there's not two flat spots on the motor, so it's just basically the other one. The other two are just going to be more acting as a safety at that point. So we're going to go ahead and slip this on. And what you want to do is make sure you're lined up with the bottom one here. That's going to be a very important part right there is making sure that's all lined up there. Between these two gears here. If you have that off a little bit, that belt can wander. Okay. Alrighty, and the next step is to go ahead and install our grub screws. Make sure you always want to use a little bit of Loctite as well. Alrighty. Now for the next step is to seat the belt on top of the pulley and go ahead and tension it properly. So I use a real thin little seven millimeter wrench. Fits perfectly down in here to adjust your motor mount screws. And then that will let you shimmy it down closer to it. So what you're gonna wanna do is take this belt and stretch it over. Now this can be a little bit of a pain. It will take a little bit of work and finesse to get the go over. There we go. All right. And then what I like to do, especially on the first run, this is gonna be a little bit hard to do while showing you on camera, but as you, what you wanna do is tension this belt and pull it up on the mount as basically as hard as you can. 
and then tighten the screws. That's what I like to do here. Sorry, I'm gonna get in the way here while doing this, but I got no other way. So it's real simple, can be a little tedious though, is put the washer over each hole. And then what you'll do is go ahead and set your tray with the Velcro straps around it. All right, just like so. And set the tray down as gently as possible. Oh. Getting those clips caught in there. Don't want to have that happen. All right, set that gently as possible, and then go ahead and throw in the four bolts. Just like that, and then you'll want to use a washer and a nut right underneath all four of them. Alrighty, once you get those all tightened up, we'll do the other side and I'll be right back here shortly. Alright, now once you get all the battery tray situated, the next step is going to be mounting the receiver box and the ESC to the plate and mounting the ESC into the car itself. So to start off with the ESC mounting kit, this will actually fit a uh, Castle XLX2 or the Hobbywing Max 5 ESC. It will include four screws to mount the car or mount the ESC to the plate. And then what you'll also get to is the two longer mounting screws and then same with two shorter ones and some washers. And then when you go ahead and get their receiver box from B&M is you'll also get two screws just to cap the um, two and, and uh, sorry. Here we are. These two screws here will hold this side of the plate down while these longer ones will go through the whole entire box in the show truck. I'll show you that here shortly, but first what we're going to do is go ahead and mount up our ESC. So this, the two tabs, the two wing style tabs here, that'll be closer to the front of the car. So the way we're going to mount it is just like this here, where our motor leads are going to be facing the back of the car. So I'm going to put this on the bottom like that. And go ahead and install our four screws. Alrighty, just like that now. And that is firmly mounted and that's not going anywhere. And then the next step is going to be getting our receiver box set up. Now in this one, you'll see here, we're just using the stock remote for now. With the castle system, this is a very important thing, is you're going to want to use the stock temperature sensor that comes with the with the truck itself. What we do is I just take it out of the heat sink of the stock motor. It's normally tucked up way under underside this heat sink here. I pull it off, heat shrink it, and just throw it in the receiver box here. That is going to be a very important thing because if you don't have this installed or plugged into the stock system, the Castle ESC thinks it's going to be in limp mode and it thinks it's overheating for some reason. It's a really weird thing. You won't get the full power if this is not plugged in. I personally have not found a way around it, 
but I'm sure there might be a fix out there. If there is, leave one. Uh, leave the info down in the comments below. We'll take a look at it and might learn something new here today. So the next step is to go ahead and get this all out of the way. All right, we're going to get the truck pulled back right up front here. All right, and this box is going to sit perfectly, nice and snug down in there. This is where we're going to go ahead and plug in our servo. Just like that. And then our ESC. Now, wire management can be a little tricky with this one because there's definitely not a lot of room to work with. Alrighty. Now, with us not using the map setup and map program on these ESCs, I actually, what I did was I went ahead and depinned this harness out of the ESC just to save room in the box. That's not something that we're going to be using with the stock remote. Then your next step is, is you're going to make sure all your wires are nicely tucked in there and go ahead and throw the cap on. Now, those two countersunk screws I showed you earlier, those are going to get in these two holes here. All right, now you'll notice there's two holes left open right here. What the way this mounts is, you're gonna use those little black spacers. There's four of them. There's two per each side. So you're gonna stick them right on top of the receiver box holes. Just like that. And then go ahead and set your ESC very carefully on top. And that's where these socket head style screws are going to go right down here. Alrighty. So that's where these two screws come into play. The longer socket head style are gonna go through the top mount and the whole entire receiver box. And that's what holds us all the rest of it down. Alrighty, just like that there. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is plug in our motor wires. Just A, B, and C. That's all that's gonna be for that. Alrighty, and then we have this guy here. Just get that out of the way. One of the other things that there are is gonna be the sensor wire. that we are going to run this way and we will be doing some wire management here shortly to get these all nice and cleaned up Alrighty. all righty we are almost done okay the next step is to come back to the stock brace and cage portion for your batteries is what you're going to want to go ahead and do is take out these battery retention brackets on both sides. So real easy to do. Just take out one of the screws here on the front or the rear of it. Just take that out and this whole thing will slide right out. And then just put this brace portion back in.
All right, and the only other thing you'll have to do is if you see this little tab, the center support right here, this is the old support that used to hold the positive and negative lead on the ESC. Um, we will have to chop this right out. So go ahead and take a pair of wire cutters, a little hacksaw, just anything to cut this little center section out. Okay, so once you get that center support all cut out here, just sits right there and there. Get that cut out, and then you have the, the fun and enjoy of trying to get this to sit in here nicely. So, this can be a little bit of pain sometimes, getting it around to sit around everything. But trust me, it goes in at some point or another. Alrighty, just like that there. And then just like before, there's going to be four screws around the whole perimeter. And that's where I got a nice drill to help me out with this. And then on the bottom of this guy, there's going to be a whole slew of them here. Alrighty, and then the only other ones we have to do is there's going to be four holes or four screws that go into the center support here. The only thing is you do have to use your hands a little bit and kind of manipulate them in there. With that ESC sitting in there, it puts a little bit of attention on it and it makes it kind of a pain to get them in. That is it. So that is everything that we needed to do to get this all set up here. So some of the things that we went over is we got our belt drive installed with our mo our B and M motor mount, Castle motor is 800 kV. Got the Castle XLX2 on B and M ESC tray with the B and M receiver box. Now, all we gotta do is, you know, bind up, or not bind it, it's already bound. Uh, we gotta calibrate the ESC, get it programmed, and yeah, that is it. She's ready to rip. All right, so we got this truck all built up here. Uh, we took it out to the Woodhaven Skate Park area, where there's gonna be a big hill and everything like that that you'll be seeing where us running it in. Um, for some of you guys that don't know, I've seen a couple of questions about it. It's uh, Weston Hall Road in Woodhaven. Um, very popular area to go to for RC cars and stuff like that. But uh, we took it out here because it's a very open playing field and stuff like that. Uh, we were the almost toughest thing out on right on Hall Road here. We went about 72 miles an hour. Definitely took a little bit to get it to go with that just because you have to have a really long stretch. Running the stock tires, this truck does like to sway back and forth at high speeds. It kind of just manges one way or the other. Can be a little bit difficult sometimes, but that's just because of the stock tires and they like to balloon so much. Um, but other than that, this truck is a ton of fun. It has a lot of power. It's almost too much, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> but uh, but the truck is so light for a system like that. It's just crazy. Um, it's got a limited amount of power to it. It runs very cool. Uh, we didn't even need to put a fan on it. Um, it wasn't too bad at all. It never thermal throttled or anything like that. It never cut out on us. So that was a real nice thing about that. Um, but other than that, it's. Definitely a really fun truck. You know, it takes a beating. Um, it holds up pretty well with this system in there. It's not too bad. Uh, landing on throttle can be an issue sometimes, but that comes with every truck, very honestly. But uh, but we're gonna leave you here with some really cool footage that we've got here at the Woodhaven Skate Park. And yeah, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Right, thank you, I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.